Hello, welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another small block mech that has fully walking legs as well as movable arms with these claw like grips you can open up via pistons to grab hold of stuff and just drag it around. Now, if you haven't recognized this thing right behind me already, this is the Caterpillar P5000 Power Loader, which is from Aliens. And I think without further ado, what I'm going to do is grab hold my character and just show you what this thing can do straight off the bat before you go around the outside and all of that. So once we hop into the seat, what we're going to have is a remote control block where we can just press number one and now we're ready to go. I press number six to undo the magnetic plates right below this thing, which is currently keeping it in place. And then just press either W or S on the keyboard, make it walk or make it go backwards or come to a stop. So if we go forward, oh, looks like one of the legs got stuck. There we go. And now off we go. Just relining in first person view. And there we are. That's what it looks like with the hands moved down. And of course, I can move the hands all the way up. They are in the way. There we go. And like I said, we can open these up, grip onto stuff, and just drag it around. Now, there is a little asterisk after saying gripping onto stuff, because there is no manual place in those claws. So if you want to actually automatically grip on stuff and make it so it doesn't fall out when you're moving around, you will have to remove some armored panels, which are the gray little section right up here, replace them with magnetic plates, then you just easy grip onto stuff, and you just drag it around. And we go get rid of that, and come to a stop. And there we are. So yes, this thing can walk around on a planet, it can walk around in zero gravity, even on the moon right here, as you saw, it works around all perfectly fine. And well, once we're ready, we lock in place, and now we can no longer move around. We can also do some individual controls for each of these arms, if that's what we want to do. So we can now move that arm down, up, down, up, rotate these around, and of course we can open them up one by one, if that's what we want to do with this vehicle. And of course I can do very quickly now, just hop out of here, there we go, come over to here, and find a magnet plate. There we are, we can get rid of these great blocks right here. So removing that one, there we go, replace that with magnet plate, and now we can come back into here, into this, find pistons, there it is. And now what I can do is increase the maximum distance from 0 0.6 up to about, let's say, 1.3. So now when I was to open that up, it's background like so, and I'll press number 8, or number 9 even. And there we are, it's now going to open all the way up and go much, much more further than what it was before. So yes, you can keep opening these up, that's what we want to do. So again, here with pistons, there it is, increase maximum distance, and all the way down. Now we can grip hold of some massive stuff and drag it around. Very quickly, just hopping out here once again, removing that, there we go, they just sit like so, back into here, putting the pistons back to how they were. So into this, down, and put that to 0 0.6. There we go, now I'm going to retract these all the way back up. There we are. Now I'm going to put them down to their standby position. So we can circle around, move down onto the floor. And I can get free camera once again. Bring it all the way back over to here. We'll press F10, go around the outside and all that. Then we'll drive around a bit more. Maybe try and grab a hold of stuff. Or well, depending on if I can actually get it into the claw like grips. So looking at it like so, press the F10, find this in spawn menu. There it is. The Caterpillar P5000 Power Loader is 254 small blocks using a couple of the DLC packs. And that is the Waysan. Or Tom Tom's Sponge to the Future and Dale Block number two DLC packs. We see up to here that it's based on the one from Aliens, and all the way down to here we've got the author's note, where it does use the advanced walking script two to be able to make it walk around with the keyboard controls. So giving this thing a thumbs up, move around towards the very front here. Here we go. I've looked around the outside, like I said, just go from there. So make sure to have controls over this so we can actually lift these up when we look around. There we are. And here we are for the very front of the P5000. So right in the very middle, or at least what we can see, we've got a bunch of lovely yellow steel blocks, yellow wiring panels, with a few grey bits here and there to break it all up and give it that iconic look. All the way up to where I'm currently sitting, here we go, we've got a standard chair to actually drive it around, where as you saw we've got a remote control block on tab number one, to be able to take over this thing and actually control everything about it. Moving a bit closer, up to here we've got some barred windows on top, with our yellow iron panels come all the way down and around. Of course, onto the side here, they've got some neon tubes in the black colouring that comes across onto our arm. They'll eventually come all the way down to our rotor. It comes across our piston. It comes onto our claw-like grips. We get a better look all the way up to here. So here's our hinge to move it left and right. Of course, to get it nice and angled onto the side. And there we are. It's actually quite hard to describe what's going on here. So it is a lot of yellow blocks just covering everything up. Anyway, onto this section. There's another rotor. Onto an armor panel. Down to some hazard skin. Onto the back here. Blast edge block. Onto that rotor. Then down onto the arm, we have to open it up. There we go, there's our piston. And on the inside here, a yellow arm panel, then a grey corrugated steel armoured panel block as well, which is the one I've replaced with a magnetic plate. Looking at it like so. There we go, closing it up. And there we are. Pressing number five, we now rotate that around. 
and of course we can press number two to lift it up, move it down. Looking at the main body down to here on the legs, though, there we have got ourselves two rotors come across on some more steel blocks, that comes all the way down onto a hinge, we've got an access panel on the front there to open up and pretend we're doing some work on there, we now pop out of here, here we go, all the way down to the ground, grab hold of the welder, open up this, and just pretend to um, do a bit of repair work on here, pretend on fiddling with all the switches inside here, and close it up, act like I'm actually doing something important. I like so, all the way down. There we go, in fact, they're getting a bit wonky. I'm not sure why the camera goes so overly sensitive when just sitting in a general chair. Yes, coming to the remote control block, does fix that up. Anyway, down below here, we've got another hinge that comes all the way down onto our fees, which we want to get some steel blocks, want to get some armor panels, and a bunch of magnetic plates clamp ourselves down on, which we don't wander off or accidentally fall off if we're staying on their moving ship. And come all the way up and around. Onto the back here. There we go. And that's what we get for the very back of this thing. So we've got two drive scoops to help keep this thing balanced, as well as two decorative pistons, which don't really move around. They are just purely there to give it its overall design. Looking on the side there. There we go. We see it comes all the way up from the bottom. Then onto our side arms with a magnetic plate. Down below here, here's your rotors. We've got two of them once again. Come all the way back from those blast edge blocks up to those pistons. Then moving all the way down underneath it. There we go. There's a bunch of magnetic plates. Not really too much else to talk about. Moving all the way up and looking down. There we go, got a rotating light on top. We can very clearly see this magnetic plates come across from those pistons. And of course our hinges come across onto our arms, which have been slightly angled. Wild windows on the top, arm and pans come all the way down. And I believe that's about it for the outside of the Caterpillar P5000. So without once again grab hold my character, actually rotating this background to how it should be. They even need to press number five. There we go. Now we can come over to tab number one and go through all the controls. So we're going to start with number 7 and number 8, which is going to be to raise and lower your arms all the way up, and move them all the way round. There we go. Number 9 is going for your pistons to open up the claws, so going like so, and there we are down to 0 0.6, which is its default range. And as you saw at the very start there, you can open up even more, if you want to grab hold of much bigger stuff. And we press that again, that close up. For the other controls, number 6 for your magnetic place to lock it in place. Number 5 is your artificial gravity, which is very, very useful for this type of vehicle. We then got gyroscopes, which we don't need to touch, and then, speaking of not touching, we've got number one and number two, which is going to be for your programmable block, which is for your walking script, to make it run, and to make it stop. We don't need to touch them, because we can just use our keyboard to move it forwards and backwards. On to tandem number two, we've got a rotating light on top, and of course we've got manual controls for each arm, to lift them up, move them down, that's the wrong order, but you get what I mean, and of course to spin them around, and to open and close them individually. And as for that, that's it for all the controls, so all we've got to do now is drive this thing around, or walk this thing around, to see how well it handles. So under the magnet place below this thing is a simile holding W on the keyboard. Here we go. And now we're simply going to stomp always. There we are. We do need to occasionally readjust it. So using Q and E to actually make sure it doesn't tip over. But in general, once you do get it level, it will stay level and just keep stomping along. This is going to be the same on whatever gravity you have this in. I test it out on the Earthlight Planet. Test it out on the Pertan Altar. And it all seems to be perfectly fine. And we come to a stomp. We've got our hold S. There we are, and then we just come back to our standby position, where if we were to continue holding S, we'll start to move backwards. Then we to press W once again, we bring it to a stomp. There we are. Pressing A and D, nothing's going to happen, but it will start to stomp. We're not actually going to be able to move left or right. It just simply lifts the legs up and puts them back down. It's like he's doing a little jig there. Just go and do that. And while now you're doing a little dance. And of course, as for that, that's pretty much it for the controls. What it has to offer, what it looks like. So all we've got to do now is try and pick something up, or at least I've got to try and pick something up, which proved bloody difficult when I was testing this out. I tried to pick up one of the modular cargo containers, or the small open or box one, gone was called. Yes, it did not go too well, which is why I suggested using magnetic plates on the claw grips to actually clamp onto it, to make it a bit easier. So to do this, what I'm going to do is come over to pattern number three, and put down some steel blocks. going to go like this. There we go, remove the middle one. Now I've got to find a cargo box. There, I've got to use this one, the cargo crates, put it into the middle, and just make sure it's nice and realigned. And hopefully this will work. We should get it a bit like so. And that's a bit wrong. There we go. It took a little bit of time to actually get that in place. They were now sitting in between two boxes. Now I should be able to pick up with these claw grips if I open them up and put a magnetic plate on the inside. Without the magnetic plate, I think it is a bit too heavy for this thing to handle. So we'll just slip out the grip. But if you do have something thin, like some armor panels or neon tubes you want to move around, maybe you had the makeshift sword that you want to move around, or even a makeshift gun. Yes, these claw grips do perfectly fine with that. But no, for this, I am going to open them up, put a magnetic plate in the middle there, and actually clamp on that way. They're here, open them up. There we go, hopping out here once again, finding this, slamming that down, also doing the same on that side. 
now it's time to walk all the way onto it, and I'll try and grip onto it. So to do this, I am going to have to open up the claws a bit more. So if you like the very start of the video, into here, actually open this all the way up, all the way down. I want that beyond tag number two, so I do not want to have them both opened up. No, I just want to have one of these, and that'll do quite nicely. I'm going to keep moving forwards, all the way up to it. First person view, here we go. It's a little bit scary, and could do to have a camera on top, but that would ruin the overall design of it being from aliens. No, I'm going to keep moving forwards, here we go. Now I'm going to press them eight, if I can. Looks like I have gripped onto it. There we are, that'll do quite nicely. And it looks like it's a bit too heavy, and it tipped over. So here we go again for another demonstration of using the claw grips to pick something up. This time I won't use something as heavy as the cargo container because that simply did not want to work last time. So now I'm going to come into here once again and actually find the pistons. I want to open them up to make sure they've got a nice big range. There we go. And now I'm going to close them up once again and start to move all the way over. So we've got a bunch of red truss pillars which we're going to come all the way up to very carefully now. And as we were to approach, now I'm going to press number nine. I'm not sure why I close them up. Come to a stop. And hopefully I've got this at the right height. And in we go, pressing number nine again, closing them up. First person view. And there we are. Now grab hold of it. It's fighting me. It really wants to take me alive. But no, I've grabbed hold of it. We see his legs wandering around there. Can I tip this thing up? Might be able to. And all the way up on his feet. Come on, you could do this. And there we are. I'm now back on my feet. We're now walking around here. I've grabbed hold of the trust pillar. And I believe that was what happened when I picked up the car container and made that massive hole down there. You can see I tried it again, but decided to cut that out of this video. But no, it does seem to want to flip over. Maybe there's too much strength in the actual claw grips or the pistons even, which is causing it just to randomly flip over. But no, I've grabbed hold of the truss pillar like that. In fact, look at that. That's amazing. I somehow threaded the needle and got it inside there. That's actually really impressive. I thought I got it completely inside the claw grips. But no, I can now move this thing back to where it needs to go. They go up to a grinding pit, drop it off and all of that. Now what we can do is temp fate, press number seven, move it down, move it up again, and there we are, it all works, all fine and dandy. But now it's going to do something a bit more dangerous, so coming to a stop here, and with free camera all the way over, here we go. Now what we're going to do is open up the arms, there we go, move it all the way down, and then move it all the way up once again. Is it going to flip out? I don't think it will, I think it's firmly stuck in there, and there we are. So yes, I can just carry around this truss block, not a cargo container, that felt a bit too much. But at the end of the day, it's just a fun thing to play around with. And as you created this state on the Steam Workshop page, this is not very practical for space engineers in terms of actual gameplay, but for having a bit of fun, it's certainly good at that. But yes, as for that, that's pretty much it for this video has to offer and all this vehicle has to offer. I'm not too sure I'm actually going to get that off the arm because it looks like it's clipped into the block right there. It's not too sure how that happened. I thought I, actually thought I threaded it correctly on the front there. But no, I'm starting to tip over. Can I realign this thing? I might be able to. This might be it for this poor little vehicle. I'm fighting it quite a lot. And I might need to spawn in once again. Let's go do that. And well, it looks like I've left the crust pillar behind. No, it's just bouncing it down there. And I just walk around. So it was sort of glitchily attached onto the hands. Not too sure how I did that. But no, as it stands, it's a fun thing to play around with. Just to mess around trying to pick different things up. Perhaps you could try picking up a little vehicle, little air vehicle. Not sure how well that'll go. But like I said, you might need to attach a magnet plate onto the claws themselves. To actually make it a bit more practical. But no, just playing around here. It is indeed a lot of fun. So it'll be linked to the description below to show download the player on yourself. I highly recommend you do, as well as the link to the Skybox currently using. I'll be back with another video somewhere soon. Bye bye.